uh, discuss one of the articles that's on the ballot next week, if, unless you've already voted. <laughs> My name's Paul Gillis. I'm your moderator. This isn't a meeting where you can make a motion except maybe to adjourn. It's to get information, to answer your questions. Uh, members of the select committee that were appointed to study this question are here to answer questions. And uh, we start these meetings with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I don't see a flag, so we'll have to. Right up behind you. Oh, really? We'll take the picture. Right. Well, if you would join me. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe it would be good to start with an overview if someone would like to do that, Joe, perhaps? Or, or who would you like to Pete. select? Pete? Oh, OK. Um, so real quick. The Volunteer Fire Department's been here for a long time. Uh, nationwide, there's a shortage of um, volunteerism. The fire department is shrinking. The volunteer side is shrinking. The Berlin is uh, growing at a quicker rate than it has in a long time. So the select board wanted a steering committee to study the fire department as is moving forward to see if we shouldn't change the format from a private corporate owned fire department to a municipal town owned fire department. Still a volunteer fire department. Nothing there changes. It's just going to be incorporated with the town. Um, some of the terms of that incorporate of that transition would be the assets are transferred over to the town, the bookkeeping, there's a variety of um, savings that can be done. I think one of the problems with the fire department and one of the challenges is you have people here that want to be emergency, you know, first responders and things like that, and they're laden down with administration. There's a lot of administration to running this fire department. All that would be moved in-house over to the town. So it would save money, but more importantly, it would save time and give the fire department more training and more time to recruit more volunteers. So I think in a nutshell, unless I've left something out, I'd like to add something to okay. that. When you said the town was looking to do this, it, it was actually both, oh. both the fire department and the town um, have had these conversations. So I should have started by actually reading the questions since you will focus on it. It shall the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and acquire the assets and liabilities of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department, Inc. into the municipality. Questions? Uh, this is your chance. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yes. So what will this mean for the firefighters currently on the department? How will things be different for them? Go ahead. So the administrative duties that we, we currently do, there is a uh, you know, the receipts, the coding uh, for the billing, sending it off to the, the accountant, which we've outsourced probably nearly five plus years now. Um, you know, the, the paying of the bills, uh, let's see, you know, managing the bank accounts, you know, the savings, the operating account, and such as that, um, as well as the retirement program. I see a lot of that going to the town for um, with the treasurer or assistant treasurer that can take over a lot of that. We also have contracts, uh, contracts with Barry Town. We also have a tenant down in Riverton. We have contracts as far as uh, maintenance, as, as far as some of our equipment, plowing, whatnot. Uh, managing those contracts, I see that is something that the town could could help with or do. Um, you know, we also do any of the, when we do talk about recruiting, so you have the whole onboarding, which also includes background checks, reference checks, and all that. 
I see that as being kind of a joint venture there with the town. Um, we have an outside entity who does the background checks, um, but we also do the, the reference checks and, and the interviews, if you want to call it. Uh, I see that still happening here in the department. Um, the, the background checks, maybe that's something that goes to PD to make it, uh, keeping it in-house, possibly. Um, you know, the, both the town and the department, I think, having to have some sort of, um, I guess, policy or procedure as far as billing for any kind of services that we may do. Um, the hazmat billing, um, vehicle fires currently. We have, uh, we have our, our alarm, a nuisance alarm ordinance, which needs to be revisited. Um, you know, those, those types of things. It's really hard when you have uh, a number of people who come in the door that want to be that responder, and next thing you know, there's a position or a need to, to sit down and do the administrative tasks. Um, a lot of these new people coming in don't know what it takes for this department to function as far as that, those administrative duties. Um, you know, a lot of that is not going to go away for some of us, um, but I can tell you there's nearly 1,100 hours of treasurer work in, the, in 2023. You know, that was, uh, that is more than our training, which was just over a thousand hours of training. You know, if, if we could get rid of some of those hours, some of those administrative duties, some of those um, Tuesday night business meeting type administrative work and, and turn and focus that onto the training, I'd love to see that train, those training hours double, because that's what the people want. Uh, I'd be curious to know if you've thought through how this is going to be governed. You have a board of directors now? We do. Will you still have them after the merger? That has not been discussed. I believe you're going to find um, you might have something similar to that here on the department. But I still think that, in the end, the fire department is going to answer to the select board. And if we have a manager, will the manager have authority over the fire department? If we go from a town administrator to a town manager, I would think that would be the same. The same as you, you function with the PD, honestly. The chief. The chief would sort of be the manager. The chief. There is a chief today. You're, you're the chief. You're no, no, no. You're the chief. Chief. Right. So, uh, how will you be chosen? That is... I think that's by the select board. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it could go either way to the department slash select board. Um, yeah, probably the select board would have the overall say. It wouldn't be a, a town vote, then it would be a, a, like electing a select winner. Your PD is not chosen right. that way. True. True. I, th I think you could use the police department as a model to, to some degree as to how yeah. the fire department would be run. Uh, to sort of put some of Joe's words into real numbers, which I took from Ryan. So, for an example, if we can bring this in house right now, you guys have a bookkeeping, bookkeeping bill of about 60. Could you, could you speak here? Oh, sorry. Speak up. Looking down, okay. So currently, right now, you're outsourcing your bookkeeping to about 16,000. Oh, excuse me. Let me find the right numbers here. 16,800. Yeah. And if you add that together with the snow plowing, um, what I did, I took the fire department's budget from 2018, which was $254,000 to the current day, which is 424,269. That was their last budget. If you add the savings just from Batchelder and snow plowing, the savings is $22,838. That is almost the same amount of money their average annual budget increase has been over the past seven years. 
so we just bring it in house. I mean, the town of Berlin already does the fire department, the town clerks, it already does the highway department. We outsource our ambulance so they don't do that much there. It's already there, it's on an Emmerich computer system. It'll take a little while and some extra effort to set it up. But once it's set up, this is what they do. And for the majority of the time I've lived in Berlin, we've had just one treasurer. Now we have a treasurer and an assistant. So in my opinion, I mean, I don't think there's any discussion about this yet, but in my opinion, there's not gonna be any more funding required to the treasurer to do this job. It's just part of their job. So right there alone, that's just those two things. If you roll in some of the other stuff Joe was talking about, you know, we could save a fair amount of money. You lift the burden of administrative duties off of these volunteers so they can train more and they can be better prepared for fighting fires. I think the goal here is to try to um, stop volunteers from leaving the, the department. If, if we can keep them here or if we can attract new ones because we're um, not tasking them with administrative duties which drives them away, you know, that should benefit the town plus the, the uh, expense, some of the expenses are brought in house. What's the uh, treasurer's opinion on this conversion? So, you want to do that tour or do you want to Okay. So, the fire department, I think Nick has spoke with her, a couple of people have spoke with her and asked if she can do this. Yeah, so, like over, I'm gonna say the, don't ask me what, what the span of time was, but um, at least with, with the current, even the former treasurer, the current treasurer, and I'm gonna say the current assistant treasurer, like copies of, of our bills have been, you know, given to them um, for, for them to review the amount of work involved. Um, and they had, as far as I know, no issue with any of it. <laughs> Uh, again, it'll be similar to the fire department. There's a chief, the chief reviews the bills, passes it down to the treasurers, and the treasurer processes them. I think with the fire department, the chief will review the bills and make sure that they're you know, aligned with what they've spent money on, but then the rest of it goes in-house and all of that bookkeeping is taken care of. Uh, by people that do this every single day and get paid for it. I mean, that's their job. They're not volunteers. That's what they're supposed to do. The people that come here, the people that train, that suddenly got to pay bills and keep the books are like, I don't think I signed up for this. And, oh yeah, they don't get paid. It's a volunteer fire department. Ma'am? Well, you can't say they, they, don't, they didn't sign up for this because anybody in any of those positions, they were off of the options to decline if they didn't the treasurer, the fire department, federal president, vice president, any of those roles, they have the right at the corporate meeting to decline. So they all did sign up for the positions they're in, which means they did sign up for the work that came to So you can't say they didn't sign up for it. And that's not after the law. They won't certainly did. It just happens to be wrong. Because they all did sign up for the work that came to decline. Well, your department is shrinking. You, the fire department is shrinking. It's shrinking. It's not shrinking solely because of administrative duties. So maybe there's other things, there's but I think. Why this is shrinking. Well, there you go. It needs to be moved over into a municipal department. I mean, if there's multiple reasons why. Yes, but then it also needs to be restructured. Not within house, it needs to be restructured by the select board, who is what people are thinking is going to be the ones making these decisions. I've talked to many community members who think, oh, once it goes over, the select board decides, you know, they do a hiring process of who the chief's going to be. I don't think the information is truly adequately out there. I think it's this. So possibly the best way to answer that concern 
I don't know if I have their names right in front of me. We had meetings with three other fire chiefs from Williston, uh, I forgot. Statesfield, Middlesex. So they came, they each had their separate meetings with us. They went over everything and they said, first of all, there is no way that Berlin is going to be able to stay in the structure of a private corporate entity. Number two, you're not even going to know half the questions that you have to ask yourself until you make that transition. Um, there's a gentleman that did some work for me. One day I asked him, I said, so what's the plan? And he looked at me and said, you know what plans are for? I said, no, he said, plans are for changing. Nobody has a crystal ball. We're stepping out of an entity that's been here since 1957. And we're gonna bring it into a future emergency service. Do we know every single thing that's gonna happen? Definitely not. One thing we do know, it's time to step forward and bring the fire department into a municipal, into the town. Controls its assets. You know, the select board is more in charge. The structure, my understanding of how it may move forward is that the select board will hire the chief. The chief will run the department, just like the fire department, excuse me, the police department. Select board hires the chief. The chief comes in, I'm on a couple other committees. We don't ever tell the chief what to do. The chief comes to these committees to inform us, to fill us in, to answer our questions, because he's the chief of the police. You know, I wash cards for a living. You think I'm gonna do that? Same thing with the fire department. We've got a lot of experience on this fire department that's gonna just bring it in, in house. That's the people who are gonna be telling us what's going on. Yes, sir. So interviewing those chiefs that came in, one of the departments decided to hire a consultant and interview all the people in the fire department to find out what some of the issues were within the fire department. Has this town considered doing that? I think this town has had enough meetings, Nick, that the fire department was invited to come to every single one of them to share their opinions. I think a consultant should be hired and people should be interviewed because I think on a one-on-one -on -one basis the consultant will learn a lot more than what will be brought forth within a public meeting. That may be, but where was the fire department all last year? We, they were invited to every single meeting. Did you just, what I just said was, I believe if the firefighters are interviewed on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a consultant or some type of interview, you would learn more information about what's going on within this fire department than what you would learn with that public meeting here. But what about our, all the meetings? You were on the board. You were, you were there. Matt was there. The chief was there's there. There's still time to do it. You know, the vote's coming up. It goes to the town, but there's, there's still time to do it. And have those have that discussion while it's transitioning to better for the select board to better understand, you know, what's gonna be the best fit for for this department and who and how they you know how they want to interview and the type of questions they want to ask. If you had an outside consultant, you would get more than just the administrative concerns. You could get all the concerns. You could ask past members why. Why do we? Because I know there's some past members who would love to be able to have that opportunity. Can, Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I just ask a, a question of the town's residents here? Um, I, I am curious how you would feel a, about paying for such a consultant to do such a study? Where would the money come from? You know, th there's already concerns uh, about taxes being raised. Where, where would the money for that study or that consultant come from? Or would, would you be willing to pay for such a thing? Oh, it's fair to say that it would be a matter of the budget. The town would have to vote it. Not necessarily as a separate article, but as something that would be announced in the town report. Is that right? 
Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So I understand, I believe I understand what they're saying, a one-on-one. -on -one. What did happen was the fire department voted on the transition. The numbers I understand from Ryan, who is the president of the corporation, is the vote was 15 to one, I believe, in favor of the transition. So your vote, I mean, that's your, I would think, your personal opinion. But I'll give you this. Voting on a transition is, is very different than, I mean, yes, voting on the transition. I'm all for it going to the tap. I, I have no, no rights. I think those are something positive and negative. There's with any of, any of these situations. I'm just saying that I, I don't think the select board, when, when they take this over, because it's inevitable, it's going to happen. The board's going to be yes, and I think that's great. But if the select board needs to know what's really going on, of well, all aspects of this fire department, administrative, the whole deal, and yes, an outside consultant is where a lot of honesty can come out. Well, you know, that may be a good idea because this transition, my understanding is we're going from a private corporately owned volunteer to a municipally owned. Once it is a municipally owned department, maybe you implement something like that. As I said, we're moving forward a little bit in the dark. We're looking at what's happening in other towns, but it's also happening across the country because so many fire departments are volunteer, they're private sector, and they are shrinking and they are going away. And we just need to, in my opinion, we're trying to keep the department together you know, the volunteers that we have now by removing some of the tasks that they're stuck with. I just want to point out one bit of misinformation that seems to be being presented right here in front of all of you, and that's the Tuesday night availability for training. I've been on the department for a number of years, and yet Tuesday nights weren't dedicated to doing administrative work. So Tuesday nights were always for something else. So they shift from administrative work that they're telling you about to me, they are baffling with baloney. I couldn't hear you. You are being baffled with baloney. The administrative work is not being done on Tuesday nights, unless something's changed in the last two months that I haven't seen. But this is one event that you guys are being sold that this is going to free up Tuesday nights and be more Tuesday nights available for training. But they're not doing the administrative work on Tuesday nights. Perhaps, like perhaps you've been answered here. Yeah. Um, so Tuesday nights are not solely for administrative work. Um, I think, so the, the first Tuesday of every month, we have a business meeting. Those can last two to three hours, depending on how much uh, is on the agenda. Um, unfortunately, that could be used for training instead, which would be much better. Um, on top of that, we also spend a lot of time not on Tuesday nights. Um, and when you spend four nights a week, doing fire department work, and then you have a Tuesday night, maybe you're less inclined to come on a Tuesday night after you just spend 20 hours doing paperwork and meetings and um, secretary work and treasury work. Um, and it ultimately doesn't help when we have those positions and they get filled because they have to get filled. It's not because people want to be them, be filled. Um, secretary work, it is a lot of work. And unfortunately, if it doesn't get done, then someone needs to do it. I mean, if it doesn't get done by that individual that was there, then someone needs to do it. Same with board of director work. Um, we still have meetings. We still need to have a quorum. Um, it doesn't stop because someone doesn't hold their weight. I mean, it just makes those that are still trying and holding their weight, it makes them have to carry that much more. Um, and ultimately it weighs down and um, it becomes a lot. And that affects Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a lot of work outside of Tuesday nights, it makes Tuesday nights so much 
less fun and less and less inclined to be here on Tuesday night. Has, have you thought about what happens to the auxiliary? The, you have volunteers that have... So we currently have two lady, the ladies auxiliary. Yeah. Um, I, I believe it's, it's still a group. It's, they are a separate entity. Family. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So they, they, don't get, they don't get merged into the town? I would think that that would be a question for them. Other questions or comments? Ma'am. So if we did, you know, from the municipality, so would Beer Town still be under contract or Barrytown would still be our ambulance. Uh, yes, this is just just the fire department. I'm sorry. Yes, would be part of the transition into uh, the town. So you know, just to be clear, I'm not part of the fire department at all. I'm one of the civilian people that was just volunteered to do the steering committee. I don't know all of the details about Tuesday nights or who does what or who does the other thing. All I know is that you get a budget from the town and everything is done here. I, I don't know any really anything about Tuesday nights. Uh, I do know that there's $16,818 that goes to Batchelder for bookkeeping. That can come in house. I would imagine the $6,000 you guys pay for snow plowing, the town could come over here with a truck, and that would go in house. Isn't that what they just cautioned? I'm sorry. You're still going to pay people in house and maybe more hours, and now you've got to pay hours for the plow drivers to plow the snow over here. Okay. So, in a way, let's just be honest. That's no. That's No. There is enough. We have an assistant, treasurer, and a treasurer. And to the best of my knowledge, in all of these conversations, there is no extra pay for them. There, so, you know, the, there's a conundrum you can talk about when you have a private entity that's supported by a town budget. Who's really saving the money? I mean, that, that's a good question. I don't think it'll be six thousand dollars. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, I don't think we're going to save six thousand dollars by having the town do it. But if we save three thousand dollars by removing that profit that we're paying a private company to do, um, we take that away from them and keep it within the town of Berlin's budget. I think that's a benefit. And same with the accounting. I mean, they. It is a private company doing our accounting. They want to make money. They have a margin, and it eliminates that margin by keeping it within house. So I think I, I don't think we're going to save six thousand dollars by doing plowing for the town. Um, but I do. I also don't think it's going to cost six thousand um, dollars at the end of the day. Yeah. So are you saying that? When this fire department goes to the town, the taxpayers are not going to see an increase? The taxpayers have seen an increase every year of about $25,000. Yeah, so now we're going to have an increase because now the, we have to account for paying the fire chief's salary. Then we have health insurance. Where, where, did, you hear, uh, 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 where did you hear that? The ballot question, the question on the ballot is does this fire department transition from a volunteer privately owned department to a volunteer municipal department? That, that's what the question is. So we come the night of the, the meeting of the ballot and talking about the town budget the night before voting day. You will be prepared to spend the budget at that point, huh? 
we got to think we got to hear what the vote is. If this is voted down, it's over. It's done. Things stay exactly how they are. If the town, pretty much, yeah. if the town votes for it and believes we should go into a municipality, then there will be some steps to take. There'll be some transitional steps to take. But right now, nobody's hiring anybody. There, there's no salaries. There's, there's nobody hiring anybody. Um, so what you will see is that number, what's the town budget? 426. That's our budget. That's our budget. Oh. Um, so what you will see is the town budget and what you currently will see, the town budget and then our budget um, in, the, in the ballot. What you will see is if this goes through, is that combined. So it will show up as an increase but not a bottom line increase. It'll be incorporated into Correct. the town budget. So the town budget's about four and a half million dollars. So you look at this and it's gonna be about five million dollars, but article six, which says, shall the town blah, 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 $426,000 for the fire department will not be there. It'll be incorporated into article two that says, shall the town spend X for, um, whatever the services are. I mean, you have to go to the town report to see the breakdown. It's, it's not broke down because the ballot question would be this long. But in any town, in every town report, you see the breakdown of the town budget, police, highway, salt, trucks, bullets, tasers. I mean, it's, it's all there. It's all there. Just keep in mind that you don't currently vote on the full fire department budget. You only vote on the appropriations, which is 80, 85 percent of the total overall fire department budget. Uh, if this goes through, then you know the voters will be voting on the full fire department appropriation, the full budget. Where does the additional 15 percent come from? Uh, insurance claims, uh, fundraising, claims, donations. <clears throat> okay, more questions? No, I just want to make it clear if you want to ask me questions that are team uh, objecting to the vote, but I am in favor of the department of the town, but I'm also a host. Sounds like a punctuation mark. Is there any other questions? If not, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Who will make that motion? Moved. So moved. And seconded. Are you all in favor of adjourning this meeting? Yeah, if aye. those aye. say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. <laughs> no. You are adjourned.